Hi, it's time for the Disc Only Podcast, where John realizes that OBS may not play nicely with him today. Let's find out together, shall we? The answer is no. No, it will not. <laughs> we can add it in post, it'll be fun. <laughs> there it is. Welcome to the Disc Only Podcast, the podcast where John has to learn how to use technology for his own job over again. I'm your main host, Proton John, and as always, I'm joined by Tom Fox. Yep, I don't have to learn about that until I decide to change something. <laughs> That's usually yeah, how I'm, learning I'm... works. Oh, and you know who's been learning stuff? Jared. Jared's been learning some stuff. It's been great. <laughs> That's Steve and George. I'm Steve yes. and George. I already knew it. <laughs> yes, no one else did is, though that is Stephen george and yes i just learned something for the first time and that's uh, jared the guy who learns something he yeah. learns he already said my name i didn't need to say it okay let's just yeah. make it sure because <laughs> you never you never know if like a fifth voice might pop in every now and again uh i mean so okay so we're gonna start off with what i just learned um at the beginning of every podcast we clap at the same time on time with like a timer right and i had no idea exactly well i i knew why we were doing it right i knew why the the i knew the reasoning behind it is to sync up i didn't know exactly how you synced it up it's to clip the microphone and the reason the reason why i said that i was like oh no i clipped the microphone and john goes no that's what you're supposed to do and i'm like wait what and it's because of the fact that freaking the audio engineer looks at the waveforms and puts them together that way and I had no idea that that is why we were doing that. So I am 31 years old, and I just learned that for the first time. Congratulations. Well yeah. done. Well done. And then, we, <laughs> and then we taught him everything there is to know about the moments just before you shoot a, uh, a film. Yeah, I learned a lot today. It's been a long day. <laughs> but doesn't it feel good to embrace knowledge? Yes. Because knowledge Isn't is power. It, it's like invigorating to learn, especially if it's something that like you've known for a while and all this, or like you, or you just learned, like you've known that it existed, but you just learned exactly what it is. And then suddenly you get it and you're like, oh my God, now I know things. Yeah, exactly. It's like that light bulb moment just clicks. Like, cause you do something and you don't really get exactly why you do it, but it's like, okay, yeah, I know he needs to use this for something. Right. So now I know why. And I'm like, oh my God. It makes perfect freaking sense. And I'm just dense. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's here's how I view it. Everyone's got to learn something at some point. Not everybody learns it at the same time as everyone else. And occasionally you're going to run into those things that, like, everybody else knew, but, like, you're learning for the first time. It could be. It's true. Like, I didn't learn how to breathe until I was five. And, like, that's. That's that, impressive. You, that was, that's, that's very was impressive. That's a bloomer. And that's okay. Dude, why are you not like a deep sea diver? Oh, I had to manually pump my lungs. Oh, oh, never mind. Yeah. I take back what I said then. So, like, I learned something uh, this week that caused turmoil in my household. <laughs> oh no! I, I, um, I was very excited to rub my hands together for this. Oh, okay, uh, may I may I just ask a quick question before that? Was sure. was is you having the knowledge the burden or like or, or the issue that <laughs> like how it's like, a like, burden <laughs> we've officially confirmed it's a burden well, uh, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really curious now because it's like i learned something that's been it's been an issue it's like if you were ignorant to that issue would it not be an issue okay so here's 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 what happened last friday um I, I had an epiphany. I was like, I haven't had iced animal crackers in years. And man, iced animal crackers are great. I love iced animal iced crackers. Iced animal crackers? Iced animal crackers. Not animal crackers. Like, not like, the, like, not the... like frosted. Like frosted animal crackers. Mm, oh, okay. I'm let's, like let's be frozen? Careful. Let's be careful with our keywords right now. Tom, because this is going to be vital information. Later. Well, no, but, but, but the way it is, but uh, to somebody who doesn't know that iced might mean icing, it might just sound like that you just want to chill them. That's okay, what I thought. I'm like, really, cold animal crackers. Really, okay. We need really to... need to make sure that the word that I used is iced. Trust me, that is important. You said frosted. That is not what I said. Trust me, this is relevant information. <laughs> oh, boy. So I was like, I was like, man, iced animal crackers. And Mallory, my loving wife, was like, oh man, I too have not had 
iced animal crackers in a long time. Mm, iced animal crackers. It's like, well, when I go to the store, I'm going to get them. So we go to the store, and we we always shop together. We're like walking down the aisles and stuff together. But then she broke off. She's like, I'm going to go get the meat. And I was like, oh, I'll go get those crackers. She's like, okay. So I go down there, and I'm looking at the, the section that's got the animal crackers, and there are two options for non-standard animal crackers that contain some sort of sweetener on top of the surface. One of them is iced animal crackers. And I was like, okay, that is recognizable to me. I know exactly what that is. That looks like the thing I had as a child. I glanced to the other one, and it was not exactly what I had as a kid, but it looked similar. It was the same colors, pink and white, but I uh, looked at the price per ounce, and it was twice the price. And I was like, eh, probably the same thing. So I grabbed the iced animal crackers. Now, whenever we got home, we didn't open them immediately. We were saving them until the next Friday stream. So this past Friday, after we were done playing the game or whatever, I was like, oh, man, those animal crackers. And I was like, yeah, those animal crackers. So I go downstairs, good husband. I get the, the animal crackers. <laughs> I come upstairs. I open them. Mal reaches in the bag and says, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I'm like, they're iced animal crackers. And she goes, you bought the wrong thing. And I'm like, what are you talking about the wrong thing? She's like, it's the wrong thing. I was like, it's, they're iced animal crackers. They have icing on them. They're, they, it's exactly what I envisioned. She goes, no, you were supposed to buy circus cookies. <laughs> and I was like, what's a circus cookie? She's like, no, the circus cookie is like the animal cracker, but it's not iced. It is frosted. It is a frosted <laughs> animal cracker, not an iced animal cracker. And I was like, I didn't know the difference between these things. I didn't think it mattered. But because my mods are wonderful, they immediately ran a poll to decide who was right. And 83% voted with Mal that, yes, I bought the wrong cookies for us to eat on stream. <laughs> and now I have been imbued with the knowledge that there are two very different types of iced animal crackers, one of which is frosted. And that's my story. I thought the, bravo, uh, the, bravo, the, bravo, bravo. This, this this was gonna. I thought this was gonna end with somebody sleeping on the couch, but it turned out it was ending with chat sleeping on the couch. Mal ate one cookie and was like, "Nah, those aren't good." And I've had to eat all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What a burden! You get a sweet treat that you had that you remember from your childhood. I mean, here's the thing. I looked at the other ones. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like we bought the better cookies. And the reason is, the other ones are nothing but frosting. It's like eating a gob of cake frosting. I don't want that. I want to taste the cracker underneath. But I, I guess some people don't want that. I think I've only had... Really good. Yeah, I've only had the uh, the circus ones. Like, um, it's, basically, like, it's basically like the, the animal crackers are like dipped in the frosting as opposed to just like spread on top of it, right? Yeah, and the the ones that we bought, it is it is it's admittedly very thin, a very thin layer. Like in fact, in some places, it, it looks like it didn't even get sprayed with the sugar very good. But that's fine because it's mostly cracker. Those were th frosting. those were those were made in a factory in Jersey, uh, where like, <laughs> where a guy named where, where a guy named Louie was uh, was in charge of the the fro the uh, I'm sorry the icing machine, and uh, and wasn't fully paying attention. <laughs> Also, there's another poll going on, by the way. <laughs> yeah, what is correct, chat? It's currently 78% seem to agree on circus animal cookies over iced animal crackers. <sighs> why, why are we making Steven, like, relive a traumatic I mean, experience? <laughs> I, I mean, like, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I don't <laughs> mind. It's just... God, I... I feel like the crackers are better because you're getting the cracker. The other ones seem too sweet. And I haven't tasted them, so I can't really judge. But based solely on the imagery on the packaging, it looks too sweet. Uh, uh, this has caused a lot of contention in, in uh, Stephen's marriage. Last night he had to sleep in the doghouse when they don't have a dog. Yeah, that made it really difficult. <laughs> he I had, had to, to build, build his own dog doghouse. No. See the, uh, <laughs> Why the, does uh, mine look like that? <laughs> <laughs> the Circus Animal Crackers has a little box that you could have slept in if you bought the right one. <laughs> I think he might be a little too big for that. <laughs> <laughs> just have to buy more boxes <laughs> all of them oh God. we're gonna start talking about uh <laughs> buying oreos in bulk again <laughs> <laughs> yeah just the cookie oh, did you Not end up actually doing that 
No, I, I did not um, because I fear for my life if I did do that because <laughs> yeah. I would probably eat them all. <laughs> I, I, I get the feeling uh, Jared likes to have a steady stream of insulin that his body produces. <laughs> he, like, he likes to live dangerously. Yeah, I've made it to 31 without diabetic issues, so I want to continue that trend. Um, so, yeah. Speaking, speaking of... I'm such um, a sugar junkie, I'm surprised I don't have diabetes. Uh, my, uh, so... I, I, gentlemen, and I think I told you all about this earlier. I have made a purchase that hopefully will be a good thing um, for my body. Uh, you know how, uh, if you've ever seen my cast, like I have a bottle of water, right? And it's it's like a small, like, you know, we call them chuggy. It's a small bottle of water and I have to refill them like twice a thing. I was like, you know what? All right, frick it. I'm going to go and get myself a big old like a bottle like a, a freaking bottle right because i want to fill it up once and bring it with me throughout the day so i went on amazon and i bought one of the biggest bottles that i could find is a gallon and i thought it was going to be a little bit smaller than what i got what i got was literally the juggernator like the this is this thing is freaking huge it is bigger than me Okay, so I cannot wait to show you all this on the next stream. But basically, like, I'm trying to drink more water. I'm, I'm really trying to, like, um, be a little bit healthier, especially in that. Because I've been drinking so much freaking soda, dude. Like, it is ridiculous. I, I sweat sugar <laughs> because of that. So that, that, was, that is definitely not healthy. Yeah, I nope. know. Um, so have, so your, your, your new water bottle is one gallon? Like, it yeah. holds one... It, it holds that's, one gallon of water. That's 128 fluid ounces of water. Yes. You yes, bought. You basically bought a milk boy. jug. You bought. You bought like a, like a, like a standard like go to the grocery store and pick out a jug milk jug. <laughs> it's so thick, dude. It is ridiculous, man. Freaking. I was blown away whenever I took it out of the box. Like I was like, man, I I'm gonna be ripped from carrying this thing around. Like it, 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 it's a double win because uh, not only am I getting hydrated, I'm also doing weight training while I'm walking around with it. So <laughs> it's really, it's really awesome. Actually. I bought a, uh, a 32 ounce camelback like years and years ago, like eight to 10 years ago, still have it still great. Love it. Like camelback has been a really great company for both Mal and myself. Um, the problem is, whenever we got them, Mal got a 20 ounce and I got a 32 ounce because I was like, I'm a big boy. I need more liquid. And the problem is, as soon as we go anywhere, it doesn't fit in a cup holder. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, like, if you're going to keep it at home, then yeah, it's fine. But if you're going to take it anywhere and you're like, I need to put this into a cup holder, you got to consider that because it's, it's called a, uh, it's called a camelback. Fit. Yeah. I think that's the brand, camelback. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. C A M E L B A K. I call it Satan's Teeth. Because, um, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Wait. So, 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 is, so is it a water bottle, or is it one of those backpacks with like with a straw? No, it's a water it. bottle. Okay. It's a water bottle. Yeah. yeah. Um, for for those who use the uh, the metric system, it is 3,700 milliliters of water. But you drink it throughout the day. <laughs> it's almost like a milk jug. That's actually almost a milk jug. That is a, that is a milk, in the United States. That is a in milk the US, jug. Yeah. That is a milk jug. Yeah, no, that is it's 100% a milk jug, but it's really nice. It has like a straw and everything. It's from um, I'm not affiliated with this company. It's called uh, from Aquafit, and it's a nice blue. And I really, really recommend it. If y'all are if y'all are wanting to become like hydration homies, this is the way to go. Is with this freaking thing. Hashtag Ridiculous. not sponsored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, you're um, going to drown yourself. <laughs> not if I not if I don't drink it all at once. You see. If I go throughout the day, then I'm adequately hydrated. If and I do it all at once, takes, I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, as long as he takes one of those power peas he was talking about uh, <laughs> before the podcast began, it should be fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, here, give me just a second. He's like, no, 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 I, I'm starting right now. I'm like, no, I'll be back before you get done. I'm going to take a power pee. And whenever I'm in the back row, just here. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest. There have been a few things in my life that I feel like I have just genuinely disliked heavily, and that <laughs> shot up the list so quickly. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what Jared does to his body to achieve a power pee, but I don't want to know anything about it. 
uh, it's not actually a thing, by the way. It's just like I was going. I had to go fast, and then I screamed on the way back to the uh, to the podcast. Oh, like, I, I thought you were. Cool. I thought you were in, in like the restroom with the door open or something to, to just emphasize what you were doing. No, my restroom's way too far away for you all to hear me. Well, oh, I mean, if I'm yeah, screaming, thought, maybe not. But you know? I thought it was like like a Dragon Ball Z move, like Piccolo ah! melting his <laughs> like ah! and like that was it. <laughs> oh my god. I, uh, I mean, don't, don't that bring... would be a very different end to uh, to that to the Saiyan arc. Don't bring Goku into this. <laughs> this uh... Goku has to pee too, Jared. Let him pee. <laughs> I'll I'll hold him. Pick a low pee through him. <laughs> oh no! Okay, nope. Too far. <laughs> special beam cannon. Oh god! Oh, I don't. I if your if Goku. your pee looks like special beam cannon, you need to see a doctor. <laughs> no, go Goku. You don't understand. I'm a Namekian. I don't pee. <laughs> Dude, <I'm Man>. <laughs> the show the show is not far enough to be this far off the rails in my opinion. <laughs> well, let me bring it back down to earth a little bit then <gasps> uh monster rancher one and two got announced for a re-release in the united states and i'm super happy about that hey Ooh. It's, uh, it's basically like it's like a it's like a oh my god it's like a tamagotchi but in your console oh that's cool I've seen uh, people they... play Monster Rancher before, but I've never actually like played it myself. Oh, it's it, it's fun. Uh, I, I, it's the the main draw of it when it first came out was the fact that you could use your CDs, um, mm -hmm. to summon new monsters. So, uh, like I just go through my CD collection, and just burn through all those, and, and seeing that now the playthrough I'm doing right now, I'm just like kind of doing like one disc at a time, and whatever I get, I get. Uh, one of the really funny things. Uh, well, okay, when I played it once. This is, a, this is like a whole backstory of all the monsters I raised. One of them was um, it was like this one creature called a Swayzo. It's it's pretty much the mascot of the series. It's like this like, think the of like, eyeball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was that combined with what looked like a scorpion, and it just looked like the the eyeball skin was stretched over the 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 lobster. But it was like it was weirdly cute in a way. So I called it Little Craw, and and that's and everybody everybody loved Little Craw. But you know, then I lost that save file, so we started over, and then I uh, created a, a Hercules beetle combined with a toy duck, and my God, that thing was horrifying to see born. <laughs> so how, if they're re-releasing the games, how are they handling the CD burning aspect of the game? So there is a, uh, they are including a list of CDs on the uh, uh, in the game itself. So when you go to the thing that where you'd normally be able to get them, you'd be, just go like, oh, I want to use this cd and it'll oh. pop, pop out a uh, pop out a monster based on that yeah because it's just it just like makes a code inside the game whenever yep. it's read whenever it reads that certain cd so they just put the codes in or whatever one That's thing i smart. learned too because uh, i tried um before i had the original monster rancher i tried emulating it uh if you have a it, depending on the uh on the uh emulator you use uh you can use your cd drive to like actually put cds in there to get monsters out of i think they probably do the same thing uh, that the Switch version is going to be doing, but like it's it's kind of neat that you could just like put your CDs in your CD drive in your computer and still get it on the emulated version. Huh. Yeah, that's really neat. So when they show you the list of CDs, like they can't just show you like licensed CDs, right? Like, I, uh, see, I don't know. I, I honestly like, don't certainly, know. Wait, certainly, but here's the thing: be like ACDC's greatest hits. Give me well, that here's monster. The, here's the thing. Uh, now I gotta pull up the uh, the uh, Wikipedia because because there are very specific CDs that gave you specific monsters. Uh, and I, I like some of them were like were really w weird. Like um, oh man. I wish I could remember off the top of my head. I really hope they just kind of make off-brand versions of every CD possible. Ooh, that's great. Like I Eiffel like 65 <laughs> is like Eiffel 6. They just like oh make God. slight they changes. Pull, they, Brit pull a, Brotney they pull Sparks. A, uh, Brotney they, they Spurs. Pull an, uh, they pull an, uh, uh, what is it called? A localized JoJo on it. <laughs> Filthy acts at a reasonable price instead of dirty deeds done dirt cheap. <laughs> I love stuff like that, man. Like... The whole twenty-seven feet instead of the the whole nine yards or something like that, like a then, like a movie. What was, the, what was the other really weird one? Oh, flaccid pancake instead of limp biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's. Good. 
<laughs> See, that's what they should do. I, and and it would it would mean the world if all of the album art was parodied. But I know that this is that's already so too much, much work. work. For oh yeah, no, so the much work. work. I'm I'm con I'm uh, mainly concerned they're going to uh, they're going to uh, get rid of all the translation errors from the older games because like man that that was the best part. I love that about it. Okay. So there is a, uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, come on. It doesn't say, there we go. Okay. There, so one of the monsters in Monster Rancher 2 is like the main bad guy from the anime. His name is Moo. He's just like a big old dragon. To obtain Moo in Monster Rancher 2, you need the CD Beck Mellow Gold. And not just Beck Mellow Gold, but a specific version of Beck Mellow Gold. Like, I think it was like the initial printing of it in order to get that, that monster. And there's a ton of them that are like this. Wow. There's also ones that uh, that are from like different games. Like you could literally get uh, Kasumi from Dead or Alive by scanning Dead or Alive into the game. Like or, the, uh, I think like it's out in Japan already, so there has to be like, documentation on it. Well, I mean, like I, I don't know how different copyright laws are there. Like they they could just they could be allowed to list the the the, the like the artist and the uh, the you know the albums on on their stuff, and we won't be able to because our copyright system is different. I feel like it would be all right to just write the names but i also don't know i mean did you ever want a, a pile of mashed potatoes that looks like solid snake because that's one of the monsters in this if you scan metal gear solid <laughs> yes i've always wanted that <laughs> <laughs> why do you know my dreams <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> i've wanted that ever since i was a child thank you tom look at look, yeah look up look up gabu soldier g-a-b-o-o -O, soldier hold on i'm looking up right now Gabu. It pulled up Nabu Soldier from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so G A B O O, you said? Yes. Yep. It's basically a pile of camouflage mashed potatoes that looks oh, like wow. solid snake. Yeah. Oh my no, god, he's... yeah, you're right. Yeah, hang on. Let me let me get this on screen here. <laughs> It He's honestly kind of looks like someone microwaved a Ninja Turtle. He, looked, <laughs> he would do well that, on that Flat too. Frick Friday. <laughs> I can't resize this one for some reason. Oh my god. Dude, Monster Rancher is a show that I remember watching whenever I was younger, but I don't remember a daggone thing about it. Like, Unlock anything your disc. about it. Yeah. Unlock your disc. Oh my god. So, <laughs> like, it's just the description. It, I like the description of somebody, uh, somebody microwaved a Ninja Turtle. There are some weird ones. There's, oh my god, what do you have to scan for that one? Okay, so if you, I've got to, I've got to send this one to John because I think he'd, he'd very much enjoy it. Oh no. Uh, I'll, I'll just put it in general. <laughs> I'll just put it in general chat. If you scan um, NFL Blitz into the PS1, you get that as you get that as a golem. <laughs> 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 that wow. fucking rules. I have to show this. This is amazing. This is absolutely it's, amazing. It's called a forward golem. I love that he's even carrying the swears of like a football. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> there's a bunch of weird ones like that. I think there's... Oh my god, I just remember... I remember the worst one off the top of my head here. Um, there is a... Let me see if I can remember what it's called. Oh, where are you? It's like a... Uh, Zilla. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a whale monster called Zilla. And the secret one is one that looks like a cruise ship. In order to get that one, you have to scan the Titanic soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Buddy, what are you, hey, what are you doing? Hey, 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 hey. What do you have there? Hey. Do you have the Titanic soundtrack? <laughs> I need we that. need I that need for that. Monster Rancher. Come on. Yeah. Uh so random tangent, but did y'all see that um, Matrix Four might be a thing? Oh no, that got confirmed like a year or two ago. Did it? Yeah. The, the day was well, the and first. It's, it's thing also I saw it's not it. that it might be a thing. Literally, the trailer drops Thursday. Oh, I just learned about that today. I was super excited. Like I did not hear about it at all. But yeah, I am very very excited about that. Yeah, no, that that got announced like what, like a year or two ago? I think it was around John Wick Two was when. Because like I they announced I it. remember that they said they were going to do it, but I didn't know if it was confirmed back then. But today I saw some um, some people posting that uh, Keanu Reeves was going to be back in it, and I'm just like, yes. Yeah, no, they uh, their site is up there, and if you, depending on which pill you pick, you see scenes of of Neo Trinity yeah. and some of the other characters. 
yeah, that's that's the uh, the thing that I was that I was shown. I'm like, oh my god, yes, give it to me. I freaking love the Matrix. <laughs> I'm just I'm curious, where, what story are they going to tell this time around? Because they like the actual story arc. I feel was pretty complete. So I'm wondering I mean, res- if they did it. Though. Like, are are the Wachowski sisters on this, or is it just the studio doing this? I assume because Keanu came back, it had to be the the Wachowskis, right? Uh I have no idea. Once again, I'm very, very um, lax on the information on it right now, but I'm just very excited. Ooh, like, okay. First solo Wachowski film as Lana's taking the reins as sole director and co-writer. Ooh, it's just wonderful. Ah, interesting. Hmm. Well, I was I had to stop Manatee because he took out my DS collection and uh, Brain Age fell out and he was trying to eat it. Uh oh. He just, just wanted to be to smart. smart. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to get smarter in minutes a day. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, he doesn't have thumbs. He can't. He's doing he his eats best. It. He eats it and he's just like, Father, <laughs> I, have obta- <laughs> I have obtained the information needed. <laughs> I am smart now. Let me do your taxes. We must father. talk about the lack of going to the park. <laughs> Take me to the park, Father. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> here's the thing like i i don't need to hear my dog talk because I, I can already read what he wants like a book fair enough i mean he'd be able to read the book too if you let him eat brain age <laughs> <laughs> the secret to knowledge uh is consumption by the way if you if you want to get smarter <laughs> not that type of consumption there you go <laughs> you, you does someone eat- possess knowledge you need you know eat what to them. do Oh my god. <laughs> you you eat the books with your eyes, not with your mouth. Uh, oh wait, what? That's how you take no, in knowledge, obviously. Not, eating with uh, your eyes. Literally. Oh my no god. Wonder man. I did so badly in middle school. <laughs> He's like poof, poof, just <laughs> knocking the book into your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> ow, why does this hurt my eyes so much? Uh, <laughs> ow, ow, ow. I shouldn't have started ow. with the corner. You lied to me, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, knowledge is power, why am I so weak? <laughs> why even? Oh god, why dude! Even... <laughs> you remind me of the nerd from uh, from The Simpsons just now. Yeah, Dr. Professor Frank. Yeah, yeah, based off of Jerry Lewis. Mm-hmm. Why oh, even? Why even? <laughs> that's, how oh. you, that's, that's how nerds sound in high school, right? That's how yeah. I sounded. Every, everybody sounds like Jerry Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> All right, class. Who can tell you what two plus two is? Ah, teacher, it's four, Clayton. <laughs> Go, was, nice lady, it's four. Yeah, it was just—it was just a whole class just shouting just like that. It was a tragic tale. <laughs> Man, you you know, you know, children scream. I don't know if you knew <laughs> this. Yeah, they, they they scream like Jerry Lewis. The other the other night. Like okay, so we live in the neighborhood. We don't really. There's not really any kids that live here. It's a lot of retirees. A lot of people move to Myrtle Beach because they're old and they want to play golf. We don't have a lot of kids in the neighborhood, basically at all. Um, the other night, we heard a child scream. Like, to me, it sounded like I am dying. This is what it sounds like when a human being is dying. And I'm like, oh god, a child is dying. <laughs> Turns out, our neighbors who are grandparents had like the grandkids over. And the children are just in the back existing. That's just like they're just playing a game, and part of the game is like, I don't know, we'll just scream as if we are being stabbed. And that's just the game. And I'm like, I, first off, I hate this. Second off, I can hear it from inside my house trying to watch King of the Hill. I need it to, I need it to end. Okay, so it's funny. That, that boy you, ain't right. It's funny that you say that because me and my brother, whenever we were younger, I'm talking like six seven eight i remember distinctly me and him having screaming contest outside oh god isn't that isn't that weird like that that is a thing that kids do because i used to do that with him and it was really funny because my brother had a really really good high-pitched scream like mine's always been like like uh, i'm not gonna say i was raspy whenever i was younger oh you know no <laughs> but like my brother had a really good father. One. like something <laughs> father that is something that you would hear in like a like a horror movie and he would do it. And I bet our neighbors thought that there was something wrong with us. Like, for sure. There are so many things that, as a kid, you don't think about at all. And as an I adult, know. you're like, that's horrifying. 
Yeah. Don't do that. Because like I get like a like a Why thought process. Why did we process. do that when we were young? Yeah, I get a thought process like there are kids screaming at the. Uh, we have a we have a pool next to where we live, like the community pool. And sometimes I'll just hear a kid be like, ah, like just like that. And we're and I'm thinking like, oh god, somebody just died. But they're just kids having fun in the pool. I hope. And like it's just. It's weird. Like you don't think about that as a kid, like at all, to like keep your keep your noise down because people might think that there's actually something wrong because you know you're a kid. Like who the frig? They're not gonna. Nobody's gonna really worry, especially back in the day. I mean, good God, man! You you could just you could roam the neighborhood whenever you were younger, dude. It was so nice. We uh we went over to my parents' house the other night, or well the other day. It was still daylight, and when, as we were coming into the neighborhood. There's a kid, I don't know, he probably was like eight or nine. He wasn't wearing a shirt. He wasn't wearing shoes. He was on his bicycle, but he, oh, was, no service, riding, he, was, <laughs> he was riding his bicycle like backwards. Like he was, on, it, it's, I, it's even hard to explain. He was sitting That's like almost, almost up on the handlebars, but like riding backwards and just like chilling and then occasionally not even using hands. And my first thought as a 32 year old person was, That's so dangerous. Stop. What are you doing? You'll fall. You're not wearing any clothes, so you're going to, like, scrape yourself to hell. It's going to be awful. And that's the sort of thing, like, when you're a kid, you're just like, I can do a cool trick! And, like, that's as far as the brain goes. The brain only, you know, looks at the situation like, I can do this cool trick, and that's it. But as an adult, you're like, that would hurt, so I won't. Instead, I'll make, like, a cup of hot chocolate. Maybe get some cereal. <laughs> and that's all that you want to do. <laughs> Dude, like... Uh, that's why I don't skateboard anymore. Cause like, I, I actually really enjoy, I wanted, I wanted to get a longboard for the longest time, uh, just to ride around my neighborhood in. And then I realized, oh, I need my ankles for <laughs> drumming. Um, no, no, it's not worth it. No, it really skateboarding, isn't. Skateboarding is for, uh, 20 year olds. <laughs> at, yep. at, that's, that's like the, that's like the cap. And then also Rodney Mullen. That's it. Well, the only <laughs> only those two scenarios. You can Listen, be in your twenties, or you can be Rodney Mullen. No, well, you could be Tony Hawk as well, who like who recently pulled off a seven twenty. So sure, but Tony Hawk is is forever in his twenties. Rodney Mullen is old. <laughs> See, I, I hate that we're having Mullen. this skateboard. Uh, is another skateboard. He was literally in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I know. And I'm wondering how old he is. I they're all, they're all around the same age. He's fifty five. He was born in nineteen sixty six. I mean, time time affects everybody the same, man. I can't I hate, imagine being in my 50s and getting on a skateboard, but also I can't do it now, so that might happen. <laughs> I, I hate that we're having this discussion, and like, in chat, was it like three weeks ago, I was like, I want to get a skateboard. I literally <laughs> said, I, I'm literally like looking into getting a custom skateboard. Like, uh, here's the thing, like, I want to I wanna get something that would like, basically be it would take it would take a level of agility to use and like but like consistently using it would would allow me to stay at a certain level of agility like i would love that i hate not being able to move i mean th here's the thing skateboarding is cool i once was a teenager and i did the skateboard the problem is when you get older if you fall you're just you're screwed up you're done you break a bone and then it doesn't heal right and then you're out of work and it's like a whole thing as a kid you just break a bone and you're like huh, all right and then it heals. You Steven, I twisted my ankle. I, I twisted my ankle falling down the stairs uh, last month. I think I'm fine on a skateboard. Like that's the <laughs> thing, though, is, is like, uh, like I want to, right? I really want to. But then, like, am I am I going to have time to really like utilize this? Because I want to get some. Um... <laughs> yeah, Eric. Eric has a point. <laughs> you can break an arm and still work at Proton John, unlike me. Yeah, I need I need my <laughs> arms for drumming and stuff. Oh uh, my god. Jared, yeah. I need you. To, I need you to do me a hot favor. What's that? Um, if you ever break your your uh, your arm, uh, knock, learn knock. how to dr learn how to drum with the same leg. Wait, what? So you got one. You got one foot on the pedal. Yeah. You have you one arm with the drumstick. You have the other foot with another drumstick, and then you you know you. So no hi hat leg. is what he's saying. No hi hat. No, no. What he's saying is, is for me to play with two sticks, one in my right hand and one in my left foot. Is yes. What yes. I'm yes. Exactly. I'm hearing <laughs> foot cramp. I'm. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> trying to hold a stick and drumstick between your toes. Jesus, no. <laughs> I'm hearing getting banned off Twitch because I'm showing my bare feet. But that's what I'm, I'm hearing. <sighs> <laughs> if you won't get on a skateboard, why on earth would you? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Like I, I want to get. 
Oh, I, 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 am I alone in the fact that I pick stuff up with my feet all the time? No, I do that all the time too. Okay. It depends what it is. It's not the same as drumming. <laughs> I yeah. don't normally drum with my feet. <laughs> if I, if I, you know, if something's on the floor, then yeah, it's 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 a long way down there, Tom. I gotta use my feet to help me. But oh I'm man, not... you, you know what? Like you know, like uh, you know, like before General Grievous showed off, he had a uh, he had four arms and just used the lightsaber, like two lightsaber, one lightsaber in each hand and one one in his foot. That could be Jared. <laughs> Dude, I've seen a picture of <laughs> General Grievous. And it's just, he just keeps getting more arms and more lightsabers to where he has like 20 <laughs> on each side. That crap is awesome. Oh my god. The Vishnu of uh, of Star Wars. <laughs> Steven, how many, how many pictures has, or how many times have you seen this picture of yourself? Okay, so real talk, I recently had a discussion with someone about this very specific picture <laughs> because apparently, I think it's like the first result when you Google my name or something, and I don't know why. Dan God, says you had so. the discussion with him. I'm, I'm, I'm Googling it now just to see. I gotta, oh, I gotta it was Dan. Find... Okay, so yeah. like I don't understand why, though. It was a random photo that I took in an airport. Yeah, it, it is like, it is the uh, the big picture. It's the picture that shows up it's, like it's, your largest picture on Google. Here's the, okay, what, what is sequential photo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why that one? Well, um, so yeah, like when I search it, the first photo to come up on images is your uh YouTube icon or your Twitter icon rather, the uh, the old photo where where you got the earthbound poster behind you. Yeah. If you go to a standard search for Stephen George, on the left side where it says that you're a YouTuber, it shows that particular picture. <laughs> and, like, I didn't get to choose that. It's some random Instagram photo from years ago, and it's like, yeah, that's the one. That's the one that will define this person. And I'm like, all right, cool. I guess that's the road we're heading. Everyone thinks I'm angry now. What is, what is this picture? There's a bunch of pictures on there. Like, like uh, okay, so there's the, the this is my uh, giant I voted sticker is one of them. Um, there's one that looks like it was professionally shot, two that kind of look like they were selfies of yourself, and then the last one is you in the hospital bed from when you had your appendix. <laughs> I would honestly prefer the hospital bed instead of the angry one in the airport. <laughs> because then at least people would be like, oh, what happened to this guy? As opposed to this man's angry. I don't want to I don't want to further Google this person. I tell you what, I've never really Googled my name before, but I'm really happy that most of the stuff that comes up is actually really cool. Like I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. Be, live a life where you are proud of your, of your like name, of your Google search. Google. Yeah. Of your Google search. I guess. <laughs> like, oh, oh my God, I typed my name in wrong. Give me a break. Oh, uh, there we <laughs> Wait, go. Wait, I was doing a search for the wrong name. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh God, help me. Oh, that, oh, that's an old picture. Oh man, I look like the dude off of uh, Old Country. Uh, no, No Country for Old Men. Uh, I can't remember his name. He's the really big guy. I can't remember his Maybe name. Maybe that's not a problem. <laughs> nah, that's an old picture though. That was man, holy crap! The eight bit drummer musical artist. I need to get rid of this picture. <laughs> I need to destroy this off the internet. <laughs> Just trash it from the internet. Yeah. Oh my god, this is. Sorry, I, I'm just going going down. Uh, the rabbit hole here. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. Now oh is the time goodness. that everyone at home should Google themselves. Yeah, <laughs> just to see what you get. Maybe I don't mean, like, Google yourself. It's not the smartest idea. Well, the other thing too is that, like, depending on like how uncommon your name is. You might just pull up, or how common your name is, rather. You might just pull up just somebody else. It's like if you Google, like, your name, The Hedgehog, to see what your uh, your Hedgehog OC is. Or I, like that. I love that. That's the stupidest thing ever, and it's the best. <laughs> Let's look up Tom the Hedgehog. Mm, I'm gonna not. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna abstain from this group activity. Nah! I'll help you out there, Steven. Steven the Hedgehog. Let's go. I I actually I I've done it before, and there's there is one that's kind of strange. But if okay, if this one was green, it would fit because uh, it's pink. First off, for Steven the Hedgehog, but they're wearing overalls. I could see Steven wearing overalls. I'm just like a overalls, but I would wear them. 
You've got you've you've got like if if you're if you're if you're a, a grandpa from the south, you got to own a pair of overalls. <laughs> That's fair. So next mail video, I expect someone to have sent you a pair of overalls. Doesn't matter what size; they can be much tinier it, or much it bigger. It does matter what size. What? Nah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It actually that's actually kind of the most important part of clothing. No, they can just send you they'll they'll just send you one from Oshkosh Bagosh. It's fine. <laughs> you said that way too easily, by the way. Oshkosh Bagosh? Yeah. God, it's so weird that you just said that too, because I was actually thinking about that yesterday. Like, God. That that's store? So strange. Yeah. I just randomly thought of the word Oshkosh Bagosh for the first time in like a decade. Hey, and then he brings that. it up today. Like God, that's weird. That just means that I'm in the right place at the right time. Well, he um, the, the reason I'm able to say it so was because there was a there was like a commercial from when I was a kid. We had um, we got a we VHS recorded the um, uh, like was, I think it's called like a Muppet Family Christmas, and uh, it's pretty much like it's a great special. It's a, it's like all of like the Jim Henson properties coming together for like a Christmas thing, um, and like but we recorded it from TV. So like one of the commercials is these kids saying Oshkosh Bagosh wrong. And it pissed me off when I was a kid. Oshkosh Bagosh. Oshkosh Bagosh. Oshkosh Bagosh. Oshkosh. God, it's like, it's like a, one of the VTubers was trying to teach somebody, uh, was trying to teach another VTuber how to say Honka Donka Badonkers. Oh, God oh, damn it. God. Honka Balonka Donkers. That, that, those fucking words. <laughs> I'll just be reading a random like donation or like message in chat, and then be like, "Oh man, like you really helped me through this hard time. Thanks to you and your habanka donkaroos." And just it's just like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, it's like that." Um... And, and every time I'll pause, it's like, "You mongalonga dongalongs." There we go. You know how like a uh, pro ZD did that? Like he read, he, like he read through that whole thing. He said that yeah. reading some of those is like learning a new language. Yeah. <laughs> Dabana honkaroos. Bunga the Gungus. Then it just turns into the Dog of Wisdom. Now, now we're just... Bunga the Gungus. Ha-ba-ba. Ha-ba-ba-ga-dungus. ha ba ba Oh, my God, dude. That's, like, the one of the best things on the internet. Muppet Family Christmas is on YouTube in its entirety. Is it? Because I remember there being future releases of it where they probably, cut a bunch of stuff probably out. Probably to, like, you have to, like, buy it or rent it. Well, no, I, like... I remember there. Be, I don't think like it's it's there in its entirety because, like I said, future releases of it they cut out a lot of stuff, and also they can never air it on TV again because each of the Jim Henson properties are owned by different companies. Ugh. Hmm. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, copyright law. Am I right? Copyright yep. law. Fucking <laughs> hate it. Licensing Dude. and. Ugh. Dude, I'm playing through Jet Set Radio Future right now on on YouTube, and there are four songs in that 30 song soundtrack that are like copywritten, and they have just <laughs> and they, they, have been, they have been they have been spaced out just perfectly enough in the set list that the only episode so far that has not been claimed was the first episode. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'm like I'm looking at like the set list, like okay, this one is bad, this one's bad, this one's bad, this one's bad, this one's bad. This one's got birthday cake three times. This one's bad. Oh, this one's good, good. No, nope, bad, bad, <laughs> bad. It's it, I mean that sucks too because like in, in Jet Set Radio, like the the music is like is a big part of the game. Dude, yeah. that that's why yeah. the original release re-release of Jet Set Radio was delayed for so long because they had to like work out the music rights. And the problem with Future is that the company that owned the rights to all the songs originally, I was talking about this with Jared before we went live, like uh, one of the Beastie Boys worked on the soundtrack. Uh, that studio he had, his record label, literally only did the Jet Set Radio Future soundtrack and shut down before the game came out. So, so all the, the rights for all the songs that they did are everywhere like all the latch brothers music is just different companies own them so like if sega wanted to re-release it they have to get like copyright rights from like five or six different companies and some of the songs people don't know who owns the rights anymore so it's literally like there's this big confusion that's why future will if it ever gets re-released will likely be missing songs jesus that's unfortunate so I mean, whatever i games. do 
That's why whenever I do Saints Row, I, I just I have to meet the volume because because uh, the entire soundtrack I then might as well be copyrighted. Saints Row Three is gonna be is gonna be a nightmare Ooh, to do because there yeah. are two missions that there there's like two missions that revolve around the songs. Yeah, Four yeah. has the same issue too. Four literally has Aerosmith in one of those. Oh things. yeah. Oh God, yeah. And and you know then what, uh, you got I'll, the touch. Oh, uh, you know what I can do? I'll just uh, I'll do what I did for uh, for Star Wars: Knights of the Republic. You're gonna... Sing it myself. Oh God. I'll scream, sing it myself. You got the touch! You, you got, got the, the touch! <laughs> you got the power! Yeah! How do you still have vocal cords? Oh man, Brutal Legend. There's another perfect example of a game that can, like, uh, is impossible oh, to God, LP. Yeah. Yep. I feel bad for Homic because Homic loves that freaking game and, like, he just cannot play it on cast at all. Why do games use copyrighted music so much? Because sometimes it's just easier than making your own because you have uh, an idea and you hear a song that fits that idea perfectly. That's all and it is. And depending on the game, sometimes it sells it. Yeah. Absolutely. As with most things, it's just a it's a, a choice. Yeah. And to be fair, some people don't think about product. like streaming. Like with Jet Set, that came out in like 2001, 2002. Like YouTube didn't oh, yeah. exist I'll, yet. A lot, of the, a lot of games that came out with like copyrighted music... I mean, they still do nowadays, but a lot of the games back then, like there was no such thing as like YouTube or like real, like for the most part, any video sharing. Yeah, it's actually been really refreshing to see a lot of games come out in the last few years with streamer modes. Yes. Yep. Um, it's been very nice. And I think it's just because they're aware of how valuable, you know, people playing games on stream is. And they want to cater to those people and not cause any problems. And I always appreciate it when I see that in the options menu. During uh, remember, during um, during uh, E three, I was trying to like co stream uh, some of the presentations, and like I'd see reports where it's like, oh yeah, no, this is this is copyright safe. And then like the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer starts, and I Need a Hero starts playing. Like, oh, what are you talking about? Oh no, it's, it's it's this very particular stream that's copyright safe. Thanks. Yeah, I um, dude, you reminded me of something. Cyberpunk came out, and that the mess that was is a different thing. But uh, they had a copyright free streamer mode. You turn it on, and they didn't get every song. There's, there's oh, literally there's no. literally a song apparently fairly early in the game that is that was not copyright safe. That's not great. Gotta love it. One of the many in, uh, problems that game had. In Tony Ox Pro Skater. Uh, one and two, the the one that just came out a year ago or so. There's a streamer mode checkbox, and when you do, it just changes your music volume to zero. <laughs> yeah, that's and pretty I'm much like, what I You know what? Fair, that's fair, fair. That's fair. Saves me scrolling down. Thanks, Tony. Tony's got your back. Tony's got <laughs> your back. <laughs> He's allowed to continue skateboarding. He can keep doing it. Man, I got to tell you about the dream I had. I'm excited. More dream talk. More dream good. talk. Do it. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this by saying I actually I had multiple dreams last night. One of them definitely involved Tom, but I remember <laughs> nothing else about it. I remember waking up and being like, man, Tom, what? And then falling back asleep and then later being like, what was that dream about? I have no idea, but I know Tom was it. Uh, but I had a dream that I recalled, and it's real good. Um, it's uh, Why do you keep dreaming about me? I don't he, know. And he what's loves so strange you. is I I almost never remember Good dreams father. anyway. But for whatever I guess you're just a very memorable character in the dreams. Anyway, so the dream that I remember, uh the Runaway it, Guys Coliseum went on tour. So it was like a traveling charity show, but we only played big box stores. So we were traveling across the US going to Walmarts. And <laughs> And I don't even, like, in no part of the dream was there any of, like, the actual doing the charity event. So I don't know how it worked. I just remember we kept going to Walmarts and being like, all right, so we're in the Walmart. This is where we are doing the charity event. <laughs> um, then uh, the, the dream, the dream kind of opens up, and it's me and Jules, and we're walking through a super target. And um, I remarked to Jules, I was like, Jules, this is a super target. Um, they have an upstairs. And he goes, yes, oh, man. And he starts getting really excited because we get to ride at the escalator. <laughs> and uh, we, we, go up the, we go up the escalator, and while we're looking around, we see that attached to this super target is almost like a, 
it's like a big like orchestra pit off to the side where like the Starbucks would be at the beginning of the the target, and uh, everyone starts like filing in because even though we're there to do a show, we're going to watch a show. So like there's an orchestra that's going to play, and uh, as we're getting into the the seating, the seating is so compact that once you're in the seat, like you can't get back down the row. And I go in first, and after I get all the way down, and everyone is like piled Ooh. in behind me. I can't get out of the, you know, this this balcony section. So I'm like, I guess I'm going to have to, like, jump over the ledge. So the dream actually ends because I'm dangling over the ledge, trying to, like, slowly low my, lower myself to the ground. And I woke up because Kepler hit my glasses, and it scared me, and I thought that I had fallen. But the most memorable part of the dream is that Jules was so excited to ride the escalator. <laughs> it was beautiful. What was that sound earlier, by the way, that, that loud squeak? It might have come from Steven, considering he didn't react to it. May have I didn't hear like a squeak. A, may have just been like a uh, weird glitch or something. Okay. Yeah. Discord's been acting weird today, chat. I know some people said that you've heard some clipping out. That's just Discord being weird. I've, I haven't been able to remember a lot of my dreams lately. If I've if I've even been having them, uh, I have I have literally been doing um, like learning how to lucid dream and stuff, and I've been keeping a dream journal for two months. <laughs> nice, so, has it worked? Yeah, it's been oh, it's been super fun. Um, uh, it's all about like increasing awareness in uh, in the dreamscape, and the way to do that is to first increase awareness in your waking life. So, um you you just take a moment like every now and then to do both um uh, reality checks and also to just be aware of your situation like feel feel your clothes on on your body like if you're walking like feel your breath like um how your you know your chest rises and falls or if you're if you're like in your car just enjoying the silence of not really moving around that much or something like that just really bringing in and opening your eyes to the little things that you take for granted going on kind of like autopilot throughout life. Right. So you do that. And then, um, whenever you are in the dreamscape, you can notice that something's up. Like you look at your hands, you figure out, you see that you have, uh, less and or more fingers on your hands. It's, it's really like, it's really subtle things. Like you won't even notice it because it, like a dream will feel real to you. Right. Like it will feel, um, it, it, it tricks you. It, it's literally real to you because it, it's just instead of being external stuff coming in, it's internal. Um, it's internal. Uh, what is it called? Um, oh shoot, what's the word? Ah, dang it! Almost stimuli. Like it. Stimuli. So yeah. So it's basically instead of like everything coming in from your five senses, um, or however many senses there actually are, because I know there's more than five. Um, it's all inside of your own mind, but everything inside of your own mind is real to you because that's just, that's how you take in all your information anyways. But I've been, I've been reading a lot of books about it and um, there is a really good book uh, by Stephen LaBerge called um, The Guide to Lucid Dreaming. And it is a wonderful read. Like it, it really kind of opens your mind of just like how much we go on autopilot doing the same like routines every day and stuff. And it's nice to like literally, and I don't mean this in a cliche way, stop and smell the roses throughout the day because it um, it's actually, it's helped my mood a lot, especially with how crazy these, the, this past year has been, uh, well, the past two years really. And it's just been really nice. Uh, and I recommend everybody at least give it a try because uh, I've been doing it for about a month and a half, two months now. And I just, write down all of my dreams that I have the night before. Um, I, I actually have a, a um, if y'all remember a couple podcasts back, I said I had a discord server uh, that I made for myself just to write stuff down in and have like a to-do list and whatnot. I have a spot in it that is my dream journal. So I just type it out on my phone whenever I wake up or I like write it down um, on the iPad. And it's been really, really nice. Like you'd be surprised at like how much you just kind of miss out on by not really taking in your environment that's around you it's, it's really really interesting i i definitely highly recommend everyone try uh, keeping a dream journal at least once it's yeah fun. 
the way yeah. you were uh, the way you were explaining that, it made me think of like like you know take a time to like you know feel the rise and fall your of your breath and like you know just take a look at the stuff around you. Made me think of like you're now breathing and blinking manually. <laughs> Frick you! Why must you do it? I'm, hey, I'm it'll sorry. help you lucid dream tonight. Apparently, no, yeah. that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I have a lucid dream, I will send you a message, Tom, and be like, "Frick you! I can't believe that actually worked." <clears throat> worked. See, what's gonna? What, one of my dream tells is gonna be uh, your dog Manatee going, "Father." And <laughs> father, I crave the knowledge, Father. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, no, I had a dream last night, and I don't know like what it was trying to tell me. I think it might just tell me that I miss going to game stores, but it literally like it was like uh, I was in some town I didn't recognize, and I was with some of my friends from high school because I hadn't seen them in ages, uh, and we were just driving to different game stores, which is a thing that actually happened at our friend's wedding. Like literally, we went to Halifax to go to a like a high school friend's wedding. And I was like, I, you know what? I'm here. I'm just going to pick up some games for work. And my friends were like, yeah, you want to be join you? So it was just that again happening. But all I remember is like the the store owner kept trying to start literal fights with us. <laughs> in the dream. In the dream. Yeah, Not in the, the dream. Facts, in right? the dream. Like, yeah. You know, like the, the lady, the lady that was running the shop was like, are you prepared for a wizard battle? I'm like, I just want a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog. That's all I want, lady. <laughs> Dude, like, um, your your dream characters, or like, uh, I don't really know. I can't remember what the exact word is for them, but like the the entities that are like inside of your own head are really funny, right? Like, they, they it doesn't make any sense for them to be in the dream, but your mind is making that happen, you know? And it's like one of the cool things that you can do i haven't tried this yet but one of the cool things that you can do with lucid dreaming is ask them questions like ask your dream um inhabitants questions about like um like what uh, well first of all what are you who are you um what do you represent and sometimes your subconscious will tell you like i've i've i haven't experienced it myself but i've read um uh instances about it um there's another book uh called exploring the world of lucid dreaming by i cannot remember his name but he has like all of these different like things that he has experienced and other people have experienced that they've written down in dream journals and it's so fascinating man it's so freaking cool um like oh man I, and that's and, and like i've been really excited about this like i i've i've read five books on this topic i haven't read five books in my entire life like <laughs> like yeah. i am not a reader right but i've just been so infatuated with the idea of getting more time to really get to understand myself through the lucid dreaming thing because i mean like we sleep like you know a third of our life and uh two hours a night of that is dreaming um, even if you don't remember it or not, you are more than likely dreaming in your REM cycles. Like that is literally what, um, uh, rapid eye movement sleep is, is you are dreaming, but you don't also, remember them all the time. Um, also, uh, like also time might scale differently in your dream. So even though you're dreaming for two hours, you might experience it in a longer or shorter period. Yeah, it, it, and that is, that is also true. Uh, it, man, it, dude, I'm just scratching the surface with this. It is just so freaking fascinating. Like, and I recommend if anybody wants to get into it. I recommend picking up books on the topic and not really doing too much whenever it comes down to like uh, online stuff. Cause there's a lot of information out there and it's so much easier. Like I, I was all over the place. Right. And then I got the book from Stephen LaBerge, um, the guide to lucid dreaming. And it's very, very concise. It, you know, it walks you through it and it actually gives you the reason um, or the reasons why you would do it. And, it's very nice. And there are things online that are really good. Like there is uh, r slash lucid dreaming on Reddit. There is um, LD for all.com. Well, um, all types of stuff. Here's the thing though. It's like, like I, I can see why the book would be better because when I think about like a blog for any kind of like, like really anything cooking, you know, lucid dreaming, <laughs> anything like that. Here's what it's going to boil down to. Here is a long personal anecdote laden with ads, and at the very bottom is a small quip about lucid dreaming. Yeah, yeah, I can't freaking stand that, and that's why I like just stick away from stuff that's online. Like if if I'll go to the library or like you know get a get an audio book or not an audio book um an ebook about it because that is like 
that's how I learn stuff is either by doing it or by reading it in a book, not really reading it online most of the time because <laughs> um, the books are just so concise, right? And, and, and I feel like uh, in this day and age where, you know, you can get any type of information on Google, tw- uh, even on Twitter sometimes and things like that. It just, it's nice to like crack open a book or like get it, get your e-reader out or iPad and freaking read, you know, I read on my phone, but I'm reading like actual books that have been publicated, you know, or published. And there's just something different about it there. And I know it's a boomer talk, <laughs> but I really recommend like getting back into actual books. Uh, this is not something I thought I would ever say, right? Cause I've, I've played video games for years and stuff like that, but I've just really been enjoying reading recently and you know, I don't know. I've never really enjoyed it before, but now I am. I think it's because I found a topic that I'm really into. Cause I, I, I used to just read like self-help books and stuff like, um, uh, like don't sweat the small stuff. one of my favorite books, um, the series actually, but yeah, it's just, this has been a really fascinating topic. I'm sorry for just, you know, taking the reins there, but I, as you can tell, I've been really into it recently. Well, the se- the secret, the secret to reading anything is finding something that you're interested in. Um, yeah. And for some, some people that can be video games. Um, I think it's worth reminding folks that like, if you, if you're like a big RPG person, like you're reading books, like those are books. Oh yeah. Like that's an entire, you're reading entire I mean, unless they're fully voice time. acted. Yeah. I, sure. Yeah, that's just an audio book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're still getting that, that same experience. But I, I do like the idea of avoiding. I mean, it's like it's like Tom said, whenever you go online and you just want a recipe, you have to you you, you have uh, to read someone's life story. Yeah. I was watching the Twin Towers fall. And as I did, <laughs> I thought to myself about God. Jesus. and also this apple pie recipe came to me so i wanted to share this apple pie recipe with oh you today <laughs> and remind you of america <laughs> please follow follow me on every every single also, thing that story is based uh partially in truth because i read something very similar to that once and was like I, I, that seemed crap. too specific to not be real wow. yeah <laughs> there's a story behind that for sure if tomorrow all the things were gone at least we'd have this apple pie <laughs> oh god people are reminding us that it's like four days away from september 11 so maybe not the wisest anecdote you picked fair i uh, wasn't thinking about the date but in oh fairness boy. that is a real thing and i have read it on the internet i mean it, it, that's the that's the main problem with like uh, like, it, well, the only, the only website that I've seen that's actually pretty decent for that is medium medium is, is pretty good. Like there's still ads and stuff, but you have to kind of search to find something like actually, yo, that's, this is really, really good on, on any website, really. Uh, unless it's like somebody who is like hyper-focused in on something, you know, and like they write, they, they make like their own blog about it. But the sad thing is as well is most people like if. If you're if you're trying to get like like a, not a, really a self help book but like something that is is helping you to learn something online it's usually like yo buy my audiobook or buy this buy that it's all yep. about like yo I need to make as much money from this as possible plus the residuals for if anybody else sells it you know or like and- uh, or, or like or, or like going back to the blog thing like. It does. It's not really about making a detailed account of something. It's about making it a small, easily digestible chunk laden with ads. Yeah, that they can that you can make money off of. And yeah, well, like, yeah. Ad, well, advertising just in general, ha- like I understand the necessity of it for the yeah. internet to function, but it is also the reason that that you should read a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if you like, you know, Jared's right. If you want to learn a recipe. You should you should probably get it in a book, and it's not that you can't get it online, but it's so difficult unless you're going to very specifically a recipe website. Yeah. But if you're googling a recipe, you're gonna wind up on a recipe blog, and you're gonna wind up in the exact same predicament that I described earlier. God, you go to like foodnetwork.com, you're just fricked. Like I mean, like the <laughs> the other thing too is that like I remember seeing like a long time ago, it might have been on like scrub quotes or like something along those lines. But like it was, uh, it was like these two people getting into an argument over something, and then like, like there was one guy who was like clearly right about it, and like, uh, and he posted, um, 
he posted like like something relating to like like the rules or like or something along those lines, and the guy just responds, "I'm not reading all that." <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just how it is. Uh, okay, so I have I have another thing that is a small infuriation. Um, go to weather.com and try to find a radar for your weather. Let's do it's it. It's like it's like freaking impossible for me for some reason. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tom will be able to. Oh, I found it! Uh, yeah, look uh, at this. A radar it, for it? Yeah, like like uh, a like, like a, li a live. Do oh, you're talking about like a live Doppler, right? Yeah, yeah like a live like, Doppler. Uh, it is okay, like no. I don't know why. Got we're it. Like, okay, listen, listen, Tom. All right, I don't know why they've made it so weirdly difficult. Yeah, I found it really easily too. Okay, what website are y'all on? Weather.com. Weather.com. <laughs> Hold on. You you mean you mean like I'm making okay. sure my my so address here's what isn't I here. Did. I went okay. I went so to weather. Have, you you to mean this I right, mean. Jared? This radar here? This thing okay, literally marked so, radar? All right, hear me out. They have changed this website since <laughs> I kind of used it. All right, hear me out. Uh, what the frick? Okay, I take back everything that I said because this used to be a freaking <laughs> nightmare. I don't know what happened. It actually it's a, it's a functional weather website now and not just. <laughs> Like an ad laden thing. They what, knew. They, like, they knew you were coming. Oh my god, dude! Did they just like? Did they change companies or like what the frick? It might have been because. Oh wait, did they get bought by IBM? When oh. was this? Hold well, on, that, that actually might change something then. When did IBM buy the Weather Channel? I need to know this. Hold on. Well, some oh. people in chat are confirming that you are correct ah! that this happened before. 2016 it's been freaking six years since i've been to that stupid website because freaking uh i used to try to look up like weather stuff well uh like hurricane stuff because i live on the east coast and you can never freaking find it on the weatherchannel.com back in the day okay and i would have to go to like uh accuweather or weather underground or wonderground or whatever the frick they're calling it nowadays or like i i actually like the uh the noaa website um like the actual website where the weather channel gets all their information from <laughs> i think uh but yeah 2016 uh was when they were bought by ibm and ibm hats off to them man y'all made a good freaking website i can't believe this i'm actually blown away this is the third time tonight that i've been blown away hashtag not sponsored and all it took was five years i love this i love this podcast i'm learning new stuff every time <laughs> <laughs> I'm anxiously awaiting the. I think it's. I think it's actually the next update. It's. I think it's the next iOS update. They're adding uh, maps to weather. So when you open up weather, Ooh. it'll actually show you like what's going on, as opposed to just trust us. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the is there an upcoming Apple event or did one just happen? Upcoming. Okay. Week from today. So I'm just, I'm just wondering how long I have before I gotta upgrade my iPhone 6s. Oh man. Hmm. Uh, I. I don't know. Uh, the, it, the, this po this the, might the, be uh, it. The, <laughs> the Pokemon storage app already doesn't work anymore for me. Oh, yeah, this oh my God. very likely this might be it. But you're in luck because there's good rumors about the 13. So, hmm. yeah, because I, I, I saw I saw I iPhone 13. Stuff. I saw iPhone 13 trending on Twitter, and I didn't know everything. Yeah, no, I, it'll I'm... get announced next week. I'm kind of like Steven. Like, I really, I enjoy Apple products. Like, I very much do. We are, we are an Apple only household. Apple Eric, only, wow. Except we need to play, except we need to play PC games. Yeah. Okay, tr true. Uh, okay. Look, uh, Apple mobile devices are God tier, right? But like, the, I can't use an iMac for some reason. I just can't work on an iMac, period. I am they such just, a Windows they work boy. Fairly differently. It's enough that it is annoying. Yeah, like I, I can do, I can do the iPod, do you, iPad. Well, you mean, guess, do, you, <laughs> so, do you mean you mean Mac OS? You don't mean an iMac. You mean the operating system? Yeah, yeah. Mac OS. Yes. Oh, okay. I mm -hmm. guess like I, I guess a similar vein to that is like you can play the drums. Can you play the xylophone? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, the thing, I, that's a good kind point. of two different things because, like, uh, drums and the xylophone, like, the xyl xylophone has notes, right? Yeah, that's true. So it would be like me saying, okay, I'm really good at playing the drums, but I don't know how to play the bongos because it's a very uh, different way of playing the go. drums, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That would be. I, a... I, I was just thinking of percussion. Just like oh, I was just thinking of the ballpark of percussion. Yeah. I'm I'm freaking cursed to not be able to play anything that has notation to it, dude. I am I am all rhythm and no notation. It's funny. I can sing though, which is weird. But I can't tell you what note I'm singing. Like, oh, that's a Q. Can you? Wait. Uh... <laughs> My favorite note, Q sharp. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, the, it's the, static. The, for, the forbidden note, Q sharp. <laughs> the brown note. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do uh, oh i'll be back <laughs> <laughs> i had a friend in uh, in high school his voice is so low they could hit that note <laughs> have you have y'all ever done the thing where you're like uh but then you go as low as you possibly can to get like one or two oh, like, yeah, just like uh, 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 like that uh, yeah like, <laughs> yeah perfect i swear i i think that's actually a game grumps reference i, I know i've heard that online before somewhere i I feel like that was uh, that was something when I was in choir. People, the, the people in my class, tried that. But the the, uh, the my my friend uh, that could hit the the uh, the oh that South Park episode though was uh, was was great though because they were playing on recorders. <laughs> so it's just like do 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 bar. <laughs> way too low for a recorder to hit. <laughs> oh man, I, I like this comment. Somewhere, Jules, Carlos, and Sab are all laughing and cringing from Q Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, I am. <laughs> I said it. Q, Q well, Sharp like sounds Q. like a uh, Q Sharp sounds like like a like a like a high fashion but pretending to be hipster kind of place. You know, what I'm thinking? It, it reminds me of like QVC. Like for some reason, I don't know why. Like, like the, the home the shopping. Piping? Oh, okay, like that. never mind. <laughs> That's PVC. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wow, wow. Yes, PVC. Well, but, but, but I'm thinking, like, like, uh, like you're walking down the mall and you see like this weird, like, postmodern store called Q Sharp. Like that wouldn't, uh, that wouldn't oh. surprise me at all. Q Sharp. <laughs> I, I have like no heard, idea what you're talking about right now. Sharp would be a Kirkland's. Have oh, you, you were like, if, if you're like walk, you were like walk through a mall and like you see like, like. I don't know, like an Abercrombie and Fitch or like a, like a Hollister. Q sharp for whenever you need more clothes Q, after the brown note. <laughs> Q, Q, Q sharp would be like the next like the next iteration of that, like the real like like douchey expensive label thing, but like trying to fit into a hipster package. That is that is fair. <laughs> like a Brookstone. <laughs> How Brookstone close? doesn't sell clothes. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, like, it would be like a Brookstone for clothes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, clothes that are just, like, I, I, really I, fancy, really expensive, but they're kind of just, you don't really need them? You know what no, I'm saying? I, I, like, no offense, Steven, but I feel like it'd be, like, an Apple store for clothes. <laughs> an Apple store for clothes. Well, we already have one fictional business. Why not have a second fictional business? <laughs> Keep adding to Keep, it. Yep, Q, there we go. I, Q, we're going to have a little like shopping mall of goodies. It's there you go. Great. Like yeah, you, you can go shop at uh, at Q Sharp for Ride all the your, escalators. Post, up to Q for all your for, for all your all your postmodern hipster clothes. Excitedly ride the escalator down to the food court. You can go to Outback Stab House. My God, why is our store so violent? <laughs> why is our mall so violent? Q no Sharp idea. is it violent? Q Sharp. Uh, well, <laughs> give it time, Tom. <laughs> It sounds I mean, it's in the name. The sharp. <laughs> yeah, sharp is in the name. I don't like that. Well, this this mall is just a pointy mall. Outback Stab House. Q no, Sharp. It, it would. It, they would. They would like up the factor of it. It would be like. It, it would be called Q Sharp, but it would be like Q and then like the sharp sign. So basically, be Q hashtag. Mm. <laughs> Q Sharp. You can't afford us. Pretty much. <laughs> the disc only cinematic universe. Somebody in chat says. <laughs> <laughs> I do okay. I, I have to uh, point this out because John's showing fan art, and one of them is a very polygonal manatee, and it is scaring the hell out of me. <laughs> God damn those dark soulless eyes! Father, dude, looks like, I um, have consumed knowledge. It looks like uh, the dude from Brain Age, like the that's actual, that's the like, whole point. A couple people have done yeah, this yeah. now at this right. point. I I guess, but here's the come. thing: the dude from Brain Age has eyes. <laughs> He's just closing them. I promise. No, he's not. Have you ever, you haven't seen a Sharpay blink? <laughs> Trust That's me, the there's an adage there's, I've ever heard. Have you ever heard? Difference. Have you ever seen a Sharpay blink? Here, does this make you? Is this better? Does this make you feel better? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Although that does look like paper craft manatee. 
<laughs> it's like from uh, Origami King. Yeah. I like that a lot. That one's actually, that, that one's actually pretty cute. Yeah. Now, now bring up the other one so that we can... <laughs> okay, hey, I'm on it, I'm on it. I'm going to lose and dream about that and still be in no control of it. <laughs> to be fair, I, lo I love this one from Prism Shard. This one's great. God damn. It's horrifying to me. <laughs> well, that's the point, because they have consumed knowledge, and knowledge is horror. Mode 7. Mode 7. Let's go. Because knowledge is horror. Someone in the chat says mana dross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ever seen a shark paint link? I like how you comment on that. You didn't comment on this one where, where Manity has the giant age or giant brain because they've eaten brain age. See, I don't like that one either because now man now Manatee's smarter than me. <laughs> it kind of looks like a like a hairdo. Yeah, it looks like a like a backwards pompadour. Like There's a little... short apologizes in chat. So like, like Manatee got like a perm. <laughs> a little, yeah. perm little perm dog. That, you know, it's, getting... a, it's a brain perm. He is going for perm. grooming tomorrow. He's uh he's gotten a lot better with water. Uh when I first got him he didn't like being like sprayed with the hose at all and he would barely want to like step into like a like a little kiddie pool or anything. But now like I I filled the kiddie pool in the backyard, he, like he romps around in it. I take him to the oh. park, they got kiddie pools there, and he like when he gets too hot, he'll just lie down in one of them. He still doesn't like being sprayed with water, but every time we leave that park, I gotta give him an exit bath. So hold him still, spray him down on, on like his legs, his hind quarters, his undercarriage, and under his chin, and he's he's good to go, and he seems to like that. Especially when it's hot out. He's the exact opposite of uh, Blue. I mean, Blue, as y'all know, loves to take freaking showers. So. <clears throat> he does not like. Uh, yeah, he doesn't like it when it rains. And he doesn't like. He doesn't like it when like water sort of like. I wouldn't call it like drips onto him, but when it's like a lot of drips, I think if it's a continuous stream, then he's uh, then he's fine with it. He he also likes to play with the hose, like the. Uh, it's like a like the high pressure like the jet setting on the on the hose, um, and like I'll like spray it into like the kiddie pool or like onto the lawn, and he'll go up to it and he'll just be like, I think I think I think I think I'll like, try to bite at it. <laughs> oh, dude, I love that. Like uh, videos of dogs going at like a uh, like a freaking hose pipe. That hose. Is so good to me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> there's one there's one particular one that I like where the guys like periodically spraying it. Like he'll go like. Ch -ch -ch and, but every time he does it, the, the dog like jumps at it and he like flies through the frame and then runs back, flies through the flame frame. You just you just see the dog, you just see like this gray blur flying through the uh, the 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 stream of water before he shuts it off. It's the best. <laughs> Why are pets so good? I don't know. Go, well, they're bred, to be, they're bred to be companions. Well, <laughs> they've got their moments. Well, every time I have to go outside do. at four a.m. to find bagel is not. My idea oh, yeah. of an exciting time, especially like to... there was like uh, I think it was last week. I went out, walked a couple blocks, found him. He ran over me excited, started following me back. Then he stopped, and then some animal I didn't recognize walked over him and started sniffing him. I was like, "What are you?" And I walked over to him and ran away. It turns out I think it was a coyote. Oh, primarily, yeah. Bagel like can, wasn't uh, Bagel wasn't moving. Bagel puffed up his tail, but he also wasn't moving. And then uh, Bagel ran over to a yard because he was just running around. He thought we were playing. He went into the backyard, and then I couldn't see him. But I shone a light uh, in the backyard, and I saw eyes reflected back at me. So I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna go get my cat now." Random and those eyes, were random not, eyes, it, it, and like rustling in the trees. Yeah. That's a little unnerving. Yeah, maybe, little maybe, maybe Bagel rules over the coyotes in your neighborhood. The, yeah, he didn't seem scared, but neither did the coyotes, so I don't know. Well, you, you I, know, I'm, I'm convinced at this point Bagel has like this whole network of other animals he just connects <laughs> with because he hangs out with the skunks. He hangs out with other cats. Dogs are his friends in the neighborhood. He's got something going on. All right, like you find him, and it's like, Bagel, what, what are you doing out here? Four in the morning. Come on, let's go back. It's like, hang on. I'll see you later, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I have, way, I have yeah, expected have to be like, any... <laughs> followed behind, like, followed on the way home with, with like a bunch of other animals. I would expect him to ask you if you have any copies of Brain Age, John. <laughs> I might have a spare or two. I'll, I'll loan it to him. Maybe like the only maybe thing I can teach the only thing I can teach animals is about game shows because I have about fifty copies of Deal or No Deal for the Nintendo <laughs> DS on my shelf. But you'll teach them numbers between one was it one and thirty for briefcases or one and twenty? I can't remember. 
20? I don't know. I've, I don't know if I've ever played it. Have you not played Deal or No Deal for the Nintendo I've never DS? Played it. <laughs> I've never played it. I think it's 1 through 20. That 26, right. according to chat. 26. 26. Okay. That's specific. Oh, one for each letter of the alphabet. Got it. Except they're numbered take... instead of like alphabetized. Hmm. I just remember that uh, in um, when we went to PAX. Uh, the game works across the street had like the, all those like you could win tickets by playing this game like basically children's uh, slot machines and one of them was yeah. a deal or no deal machine dude those were the worst though because like you literally have like a oh I mean it's a 1 in 26 chance of either winning really big or just absolutely nothing and it's like three dollars a play right yep. like oh my god it was disgusting there was also the, yeah, the, the wheel of fortune machine Got a lot of use uh, yeah. a few years ago. And I like the Wheel of Fortune machine. We won, we won that. We won it big at that one one year. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, that was, was that the was that the year that we had the Twitch party we went to? No, the Twitch party we, we played a different game that was like super easy to get tickets off of. Yeah, yeah. That was the bouncing oh, yeah, because, ball because, one, right? I think so. But they basically they're they're basically giving away cards at that Twitch party. Yeah, Bro, I miss I miss arcades, man. I haven't been to an arcade in a while. I miss outside. Well, I not at 4 a.m., <laughs> but you, you know what I mean. I miss Fair traveling. Enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, we just got back from Canada, but that technically does. Uh, I mean, it does count, but I I am I mean more so for, uh, like, just going to conventions well, and stuff. Well, Jared, I've been, I've been curious about this. What's the procedure, mm -hmm. like, now? Is it is it you take a COVID test there, or do you have to just show, uh, like, a vaccine? Oh, no. Oh, or? God. L let me freaking tell you. Okay. So I'm, I'm legit curious. Yeah, the um the Canadian border requires a positive COVID test that was done. negative. It's ne negative, you mean negative. Sorry, negative COVID test. Yeah, <laughs> bring they, more they COVID into Canada, up. please. Listen, listen. <laughs> they need they need to positively know that you have a negative COVID test. There we go. Um, you have to have one within seventy two hours of going to the border. Like you, if if it's over seventy two hours, you're basically fricked. Like they're not going to let you do anything. Um, so you have to bring the negative COVID test. You also have to bring proof of vaccination, both shots or the one Johnson and Johnson, depending, um, and basically all of your other stuff. And because of all the craziness that's going on, the customs is a nightmare right now. It took it, like we we missed a flight because of customs, which we've never missed a flight because of customs, especially in like Toronto, because they're usually super fast. And um, but yeah, it is the, it, now. I will say that I have never felt safer from COVID than in an airport because they are not letting you in that freaking building if you have if you have anything that even like remotely looks like COVID. Plus you have to have the negative COVID test uh that was done within three days of the trip. So it, they are they are doing a good job, but it's just like there's a lot that you have to do. You have to have all of your stuff with you. Like we had a binder of everything that we've ever really gotten for immigration so that we could make sure that Erica could get back into the States and I could get back into, uh, or I could go up to Canada and get back to my country. So it was, it was a little bit of a trial at the airports and they didn't really know what to do with all the extra information that we needed to have. Uh, at times, like they were like, okay, like I, I had trouble kind of getting back into the U S cause they, they were like, uh, he's kind of flagged to not be able to go back. I'm like, I'm a U.S. citizen. Why am I not flagged? <laughs> oh, you're and a citizen it, now. Okay. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you're stuck here now, eh? But like Thanks for the accent, just, by the way. Appreciate that. No problem, listen, Bob. Listen, I'm sorry. That's like A is the only thing that I know that you We do. don't even do that. Well, some mm. of y'all do. Yeah, I've heard it. Anyway, go ahead, Jared. I definitely I heard it while I was in uh, uh Winnipeg, that's for just, sure. Just just uh, just to clarify, Jared was the one who said the A, not me. <laughs> Anyways, uh yeah, like they didn't want to really let me like go. It took us like a while to go through the first, and I think it was because the, the woman was training. Um, but for some reason, I was flagged on her screen to not let this dude back into the U.S. And I'm like, ah, uh, I am allowed back into the U.S. I promise, you know, like that whole thing. So, but yeah, what, was it the was it the kind of thing where there was just like a, a dude on a no fly list that looked remarkably like you? <laughs> oh my god, what if? What he's the nine bit drummer. He has a mustache, <laughs> like a goatee. Just Jared with a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, it's just it's a little bit more crazy than uh, than it used to be. 
No, yeah. I, I mean, I'm well, as, the, the world has changed. <laughs> yeah. So again, <laughs> it's a knockoff eight bit drummer called like the two bit drummer. <laughs> So, okay, I hate that. I hate that phrase because uh, one of the kids at the youth group that we go to <laughs> uh, figured out that I was uh, uh, like, you know, figured out that I was the 8-bit drummer. And he started calling me the 2-bit drummer because he was, you know, being funny and edgy and, and trying to make fun. And I'm sitting there like and I can't I can't let this kid know that it's getting under your skin. It, it, it drives me nuts because he's a kid. Right. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like just yeah. the nervous laughter. It's like, <laughs> listen, the heck up. <laughs> all you got, all you got to tell yourself is that you you have a successful career and he's a child. No, no, exactly. Like I don't really care that much, but it's just like, does he you scream? Hear it. Because a lot of kids, <laughs> man, I tell you, they get in the backyard, they scream. That th- very true. Uh, hey, two bit drummer, I'm gonna go scream now. <laughs> hey, two bit drummer, hey. hey, Sally, what you doing Saturday? I don't know, Ben. I was thinking about screaming. Oh, that sounds good. I would scream that time anyway. Okay, I'm gonna come over. We scream together. We scream. Yeah, we should scream right now. <laughs> you know, how it's like, you know, that's like a bird's like chirp to communicate. That's how children communicate. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it sometimes. It's just ah, oh, <laughs> that kid had a really low voice. What the frick is going on? <laughs> 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 oh! <laughs> earlier and earlier every generation <laughs> hey oh bill God. you gotta go get an ice cream yeah <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i would love to go and pr- procure an ice cream with you sally S- someone in the chat said i'm playing screams and the first thing that came to mind was now it's portable nut <laughs> <laughs> it's nut you can hey! play with outside Ow, I can't come out. I'm playing nut. I'm playing nut. <laughs> Why do we all remember that stupid commercial series? It was yeah. really because memorable. It was, it was very memorable. They did good. PSP. It was good unbelievably job. memorable. It's a nut. It was the stupidest play. ad ever, but it was so memorable. Outside. <laughs> but there's portable nut. Yeah, it's it's a nut. Portable. You can play outside. I'm playing nut. <laughs> Why does it sound like one of the girls from like Teenage Squad or was it <laughs> Teen Girl Squad? Teen Girl Squad. <laughs> What's your uh, face? All right, gal, all right, gal pals, it's time to play nut outside. <laughs> I hate so this. good. You can I play hate nut. It's so good. outside. Oh, frick. You can end this anytime, John. You That's true. I've been given the, no- <laughs> the notification that I can end. You can just end the show. Just be like, you know what? Dan already I mean, posted the talking points. Yeah, no, he, right posted, he posted the talking points like 10 minutes ago. He's like, yeah, I want to yeah. leave. Dan is already like, please, God. Like, <laughs> end the suffering. He's, he's just conked out. He's done. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's just, Christ, he just writes so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, talking points for this episode. Recording 101. Iced, iced baby. Power pee. <laughs> Flaccid pancake. Kids scream. Go Google yourself. Scream singing. My specialty. Escalator excitement. Me cans read. I, I don't but remember. Not talk. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, no, that's what's Dan. written there. That's what's written there. <laughs> Appreciate it, Dan. Thanks. Recipe lore. I was going to say, yeah, Q sharp. Pets be good. You got... Oh, I'm not doing it. <laughs> You've got COVID, huh? <laughs> and I'm playing nut. What Dan wrote was, you got COVID, eh? <laughs> oh, you got that COVID there, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, he said it anyway. It's Yeah, no, it, it's just a certain type of Canadian says it. It's not a common thing. <laughs> I'll take microwaving a Ninja Turtle for 200, Alex. Oh, God. That boy was melty. He was all melty. <laughs> Look like you done got stuck in the little the, oven. The Ugh. base Gabu looks like mashed potatoes anyway. Oh, Lord. It's like the color of mashed potatoes. And it like grows arms and legs to punch and kick you. But it's still shaped like a pile of mashed potatoes and it grows arms and legs. Monster Hunter is cursed. <laughs> Rancher. Sorry, uh, Monster Rancher. Well, uh, Monster Hunter might be a little cursed too. Just not in that <laughs> yeah. level. Monster Hunter's fun. All right, uh, Dan, I know your microphone's a little cursed, but let's try it anyways. Do you have any words to give us? Hi. Hi. 
That, that worked. Yeah, that didn't sound too a little bad. Bit of, there was a little bit actually, of a garble. Yeah, you sound okay. There was a little bit of, well, for that time, because but, but he said, uh, beforehand, there was a lot of garbling on that. It was very quiet. Hmm. Well, that's it. Yeah, well, I was going to end the I... podcast, but then I got a message. Oh, yeah, de- like, I got a message from Chatia saying, did Jared ever tell the story of when I did the splits in an escalator for that? I'm not okay. sure. Okay. I need to know now. I need okay, to know. Okay, I was... I was wondering if you wanted me to tell the story when she said it, but um, but yeah, I am more than happy to tell this story. Okay, so we we get over to the Savannah Airport, and um, we are we're, we have our bags and stuff, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is how it went. Like we had our bags and stuff, and she like you have to go up like a, a thing, like a level to get to it. But I thought that we had to go down a level really quick instead. Cause I thought that we parked way too or way up in the parking area. So she has her bag on the, uh, on the escalator and one foot on the escalator. And I'm like, wait, baby, wait. Cause I thought we had to go downstairs. She's like, what? Oh, wait. And she is literally being pulled apart by this freaking escalator. Cause she oh. has one foot off and one foot on. And she's like, wait, what do you mean? Wait, I can't wait. I can't. <laughs> but she's not, She's not getting on the escalator to go up and go all the way back down. She was trying to pull her stuff off the escalator because I, t- I said, hey, baby, wait, really quick. <laughs> so she's just slowly doing the splits, going on this escalator. And I'm like, babe, just get on it. Just get on it. She's like, okay, okay. <laughs> so I almost lost my wife to an escalator in, in the Savannah <laughs> Airport. A tragic tale. Uh, that would not have been a good uh, good way to go. No, not at all, dear. <laughs> Nope. Good lord. All right. If, if you're ever if you're ever on an escalator, just commit. Like <laughs> legit. <laughs> All right. Schedule for the week for everybody. Uh, it's actually a week off for me, so I'm not doing anything till Saturday. No YouTube upload or anything like that. I'm just taking some time to try to get caught up on some stuff, uh, and maybe sleep. Uh, that one. That part's optional. But I am on Top Down Perspective, my other podcast, on Thursday, and Fortune Cookie is Saturday. Otherwise, uh, uploads on YouTube Sundays and Thursdays are currently Jet Set Radio Future. They just just not this week. Tom, uh, I got Let's Plays, Let's Plays, Let's Plays. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's Donkey Kong Country Returns. Uh, we're coming up to the end of that one though, even though we're only like nine episodes in. Uh, and then on Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, uh, yeah. Well, I said that kind of weird. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I'm playing the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Uh, we can kind of see like the half RP, half not RP let's play of uh, my character, uh, Krug the Orc. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. I'm almost done with Danganronpa 2. I think I maybe got one or two more streams of that. And uh, if uh, once that game is done, then the No Dummy and Yes Dummy shirts I got on sale in my shop are, are going to be taken off of there. What else? What else? Oh, yeah, and on Friday, I'm playing uh, D&D over at twitch.tv slash Brett Ultimus with uh, Adri, Jules, and Gerard. It seems like good times. Neat. Steven. I'm, uh, uh, me and Mal are streaming WarioWare when it comes out on Friday. Oh, is that this week? It, Damn it. Comes, yep, it ten. comes out at this Friday, and I'm like, oh, yeah, let's play that video game. So me and Mal will be streaming it. And it's co-op, so it should be a pretty good fit. That's it. <laughs> Don't worry uh, about the other stuff. <laughs> uh, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, drum streams at 4.30. Um, and that's really it, truthfully. Just for the next couple of weeks, we've just gotten back into uh, our regular schedule. So, yeah, just uh, drum in action, boys. Someone oh. in the chat said, wait, Jules? Yes. Escalator enthusiast family Jules is going to be at D&D on Friday. <laughs> There's never been a person who loves escalators as much as family Jules. Well, maybe that's Jetty's all trying, in a dream. Probably the creator. Jetty's trying to tell you that you, Jetty's trying to tell you got something on Thursday, Jared. Oh, um, oh yeah, that's right. Okay. I didn't know if, uh, if Jacob had said, I'm, I'm going to be playing some games with uh, secret agent Jacob on his channel. Um, I don't want to give away what we're playing yet. Uh, but yeah, Sorry, I totally forgot about that. Around 4 o'clock uh, on Thursday, we will be playing some games. Oh, yeah. Also, my Discord has a, a, added a new channel for, for fan art, so feel free to drop that by. I would like to feature that on streams and Let's Play videos. 
Okay. If y'all if y'all drop it fan art in that Discord channel. On the Tommyness Party Discord. Yay. All right. I'm going to hopefully end this podcast and we're going to hope that OBS cooperates because I'm still getting used to actually using this as my proper streaming program. A uh, special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and of course, our producer is Motion Dan. The next disc only will be October 5th, the first oh, John. Tuesday of the month. Yo? John, come on. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> My God. That actually scared the living swing and a miss. <laughs> swing and a miss. I'm cursed. I'm going to sleep. By which I mean I'm going to go order a pizza. Bye, everybody. See y'all next time. Next time we'll talk about murder, Jim. Oh yeah, murder, Jim. Next time, Tom. <laughs> Disappointment.